Hey guys, it's Ricardo and welcome to another Block Tech Tips. So guys, today I'm going to show you how to actually repair a dead computer or a PC that's not um, booting. Alright, so if your computer is dead or it's um, need of repair, I'm going to show you how to actually troubleshoot this. Alright, so these are the tips that I use on a daily basis when I'm dealing with a client's computer. So if you're um, in need for PC repair such as you got a computer at a yard sale or maybe you have a whole computer that's just lying around you can actually use these tips to actually revive that dead or um, computer that seems not to be working right? and this can also save you some money and this is basically what um, those guys at the shop usually do and then charge you um, a lot of money right? so let's just show you what to do right? first of all over here depending on what type of computer you have the internals might be slightly different for example, this is more of a, I would say a mid, or if you want to say high-end um, computer look like this. The components um, look kind of weird. We have um, um, water cooling, self-contained, graphics card, um, the location of stuff is all out of whack. I'm going to show you a traditional looking um, PC over here, and over here you might have something looking like this. So this tutorial will work for either of um, these um, computers. So I'm going to refer to these um, most of the time. I might show you what it looks like on the other computer over there. But you should be able to follow using the simple um, example here. Alright guys, so we're just going to go straight into the fix in case your um, PC is dead, alright? So to revive it. First thing you want to do guys is to make sure that you unplug the PC, right? And once the PC is unplugged, um, let's go ahead and hold down the power button. I'm actually holding it right now. And what you're going to do is just hold it down. And you're going to count to 60 or just wait a minute. As soon as a minute is passed, you're going to let go of the power button. You're going to plug in the power card once more. I don't have my power card right now, I'm just demonstrating. And once you plug this back in, you're going to hook up back everything, including your monitor. Alright, and once you hook up your monitor and everything. Alright, so once you hook up your monitor and everything, and um, yeah, everything is connected, you're going to hit the power button as normal, just press it once. And of course, in a number of cases, I would say probably about 30-40% um, of cases, your PC will start to um, boot. Right, so for most cases that will um, actually cause the PC to um, boot up. Now, um, what had happened a while ago was that sometimes you have residual energy within the um, circuitry. And by actually plugging out everything and actually holding down the power, what happens, it's allowed to drain or deplete and that can actually allow the system to basically recalibrate and actually boot right um it's a very fairly simple trick and i'm sure you're surprised if that actually worked if it did not work for you i'd advise you try it at least another two three times before you actually give up on that method all right now um if that's finished let's go straight over to the next method or the second method now the second method is you might have some faulty components, right? Because most PC um, problems are either hardware or software based, right? Software is when um, the PC is still booting, but for some reason, although it's booting, it's not, it's powering up. You're seeing stuff on screen, but not what you want to see. So I'm not dealing with those type of problems, dealing with the hardware problem, which is the main problem. So the first thing I want to do, guys, is to get a power cable, right? I want to get your power cable. I want to just disconnect it from the PC. So once it's disconnected from the, sorry? disconnected from the PC what I wanted to do guys is to find a, another one that you know that is working and I want to switch it out um, sometimes these things go bad quite easily especially if you had them for years and the only thing that's prevent the PC from booting is because this is um, bad or it has a short so basically I wanted to switch this out try a new cable that's similarly designed from another PC or so on and you might be surprised that the PC might just end up um, booting now if that fails, the third thing or the third culprit that I normally um, check is my um, power supply. Now I'm um, over here with a 500 watt um, power supply and of course this is usually um, good for standalone or standard systems. Over here, this um, power supply is on the other side. This is a double wide case. I can show you at the top here. So you see it's basically like two cases um, molded or melded together. All right? Alright, so this one has a, I think, a thousand watt um, power supply, and that's because of all the peripherals and so on. Um, back over here, oh, uh, with the power supply, you might have a dead power supply. What you can do is actually you can pick up one of these um, for cheap. Um, you can probably pick up one for $50 or so on. Um, more expensive one will earn you a few hundred dollars US. All right? So what I want to do, guys, is in that case, what you could actually do is to get additional power supply and actually remove all the cables 
that you're seeing here and attach your new power supply once the power supply is um, attached you can actually try booting the PC alright if you do not want to um, mess with that right now because that seems too complicated you could leave this for further on in the troubleshooting it's your choice alright so let's go to another um, thing that might be causing your PC not to boot and if you look down here or up here I should say you'll notice that we have two sticks of RAM now RAM can actually prevent your PC from booting up um, or, or seem to make it seem like it's dead now, if you have a faulty RAM what I, or what I um, <coughs> suggest you do is to remove both sticks right just basically um, press on these notches right the RAM will come right out as you're seeing here and once you remove the RAM just hold them by the edges all right and once you do that make sure you remove both and you put one in the first slot so the first slot will be this slot here that I have removed this one and then try to boot with one right they might be dirty as well so make sure that you go ahead and clean these off you can actually use um, canned air or get a paintbrush or something and dust these off you can blow out these slots um, or dust them out with a paintbrush or just blow into them should clear them out right once you do that you can actually place the ram, the ram back in right and just snap it into place it will go right back in all right the more ram you have or um, ram sticks is going to be um more potential cause for um some form of error so that's why i recommend that you take out all of them and place them back in one at a time all right there you go they slide right in it's quite easy all right so if the problem is not ram after you try cleaning and then replacing them one at a time or getting a total new stick and place them in and try to boot if it's that if that's not the issue next thing you can actually try is you can actually try to clear the CMOS now over here you have the CMOS watcher right and the CMOS over here you can actually press this side and it will pop right out once it comes out what you can actually do I'll just try to show you here all right and it's quite easy so now it's popped up it's kind of in a cluster area but I'll try to get it out just to show you guys all right And this is what the battery looks like now I recommend that you take this out leave it out for a minute or longer and basically what's gonna do is gonna reset the internals for the um, PC this keeps stuff like time and other settings when the PC is off so that your PC you don't have to set the time each time you um, power off so it's storing um, some motor energy sometimes that data might be corrupted and so on and messing with the PC and its ability to start up or boot another way to do this is to actually adjust the jumpers here there's a jumper right down here it's hard to see but basically it's right beside the battery let me just move this out of the way and it has a pin just move the pin over your three prongs and short the they're shorting the first two to short the second two and leave the other half then you can actually place them back that will reset the system all right i'm just gonna slide this back in all right so Another thing that you need to care bear in mind is that um, if the regular culprits are not to blame, you're realizing that um, it might be a case where it's just one thing that's actually preventing the PC. Let me make some. Go to some other culprits. If you have anything such as a graphics card, you're going to remove that. And if you have onboard video, just go ahead and try to connect through the onboard video and not through the video card. All right? So the video card would fit down here in this PCIe slot. And of course, you'd make the connection down here. All right? If you um, if there's only a slot for graphics and there's no onboard um, video card, just go ahead and try to find an old PCI um, Express card, the simple ones, and place it near and see if it will actually um, boot. Right? Um, if that doesn't work, another thing that you can actually try, guys, is to remove any peripherals such as um, a PCIe expansion slots or anything like that that's in these ports. So what you want to do is just go ahead and remove any additional um, accessories such as memory card readers and so on those things can actually prevent the PC from booting so you just want to have a pure experience by keeping all the core things such as the motherboard, CPU, power supply, a single DVD drive or CD-ROM depending on what you're dealing with right or Blu-ray drive and of course a single hard drive in this one I don't have a hard drive right now I'm just demonstrating right and then you're just going to try it um, to boot right all right other things that might cause your PC not to boot includes the uh, faulty power button itself. So if you can, you can actually switch around the power and the um, reset button. All right? There are those buttons, um, if you don't connect them in the right way, you can actually switch them around. All right? 
if in that happens in that case you'll need a new case or the buttons need to be repaired so the buttons could be a cause in rare cases other potential causes for your pc not to boot might include things such as all right so other things that might cause um your pc not to boot is a dead motherboard now um, when a motherboard dies it's actually so bothersome to change seeing that you have to reseat the cpu and so on so hopefully it's not the um, motherboard although in cases where the pc is extremely old it could be a fault with the motherboard because after a while the pathways that's etched into the circuit board do become um, broken right so on older pcs that might be the um, case or on even on new ones you might get a doa or dead on arrival um, motherboard all right but those are rare um, cases are rare cases i usually leave that one until last when i have exhausted all the other options to actually figure out what's going on all right so it could be the motherboard it could also be the cpu that's another rare one as well but if i were to guess i would say if um it's a cpu first make sure that the cpu is seated properly if it's not seated properly you might have a case where um it still won't boot and it might cause another um other options so if you're just building your pc that's usually a good culprit to say that that's the cause why your PC is not booting, all right? So I suggest that you leave the CPU and the motherboard to last um, before you actually try um, those, all right? Of course, those are some of the main things that you can actually do to actually um, fix a dead PC. Now remember, there is no quick, all right? Remember, there is no quick fix to this. You actually actually go through the procedures, try to troubleshoot and find um, individual um, issues I remember every pc is different so be patient take your time go through and actually figure out what's happening all right guys spread from lucky tips and bye until next time bye